Here we are with another Facebook Live. Uh, no, sorry, Friday Night Live, <laughs> January 27th, 2023. And we got some sound happening. I hope everybody's doing amazing. It's uh, 27, Divine Nine today. Uh, if we're just looking at the day, we love our nines. Everything works wonderful when you're using Divine Nine. You know, tune your music into four, three, two, Divine Nine, and watch how your whole emotions change and become more peaceful, more at ease, instead of being agitated. Be more, much more peaceful, especially if uh, you tune it by ear, you know, with the old tuning forks. But um, as we were saying, even if you do it digitally, you're going to be better off than, uh, than leaving it in the A equals 440 hertz, which is the standard tuning internationally. Um, as we were talking in the post, uh, they changed the way we measure a second. And they said it won't have any difference. I've heard that one before. The master of deception is always using the Luciferic intellect to try and convince us of everything but the truth. <laughs> it won't make any difference. Yeah, okay. You know, digital is no different than analog. Okay. Ones, how can ones and zeros when your you know computers the way they work, ones and zeros, on and off switches, doesn't matter how fast how it could be this as fast as speed of light, still on and off switches. Analog is a smooth line. You know, it doesn't matter how fast the on and on and off switches go, you're never gonna be a smooth line. Analog, life, meaning life. Digital has no life. Uh, it's all fiction, fiction world. So we can focus on, you know, um, what the creator has made perfectly, or we can focus and, you know, believe in uh, man's creations, which is all full of deceptions and lies and and brings us to the state we are in now on this planet and severe imbalance. People are dropping white flies like never before. Disease is at the all-time high like never before in all age groups. So now's a good time to live it and love it. <laughs> Now is a good time. Now is always a good time. And being in a fasting state is, if you can grasp, if you can grasp the uh, spiritual aspect of it, you can get through the physical pains, the physical pains that we create in our mind. And, you know, Oh, these hunger pains. Oh, I'm losing weight. Oh, it's too cold. Oh, you know, keep making all these excuses. If you focus on the spiritual aspects, all that stuff will go away. It's going to be there, and we're going to be challenged with it over and over and over again, but nothing compares to being in a Wonderful dry fasting state, a prepared dry fasting state to allow the source to do the work through our soul. You know, back to blueprint, as we like to say. It's a beautiful, wonderful feeling. So how is everybody doing today, tonight, this morning, wherever you are? Um, if you got any questions, now's a great time. Now's a great time, right? The stuff you want to discuss, talk about, want to share your story. Um, it's 
great time. <clears throat> Hello, Barbara, how are you doing? You're muted, you're still muted. I do, though, yeah, I said, um, I'm doing okay, thanks for asking. Ah, very good. <laughs> Always smiling, awesome. It's a challenging time, but I've got, like I'm gonna be in a contest, a speech contest. I'm gonna try to talk intelligently <clears throat> about um, people healing, how we can help each other. And uh, I'm, I'm invited to a woman's study meeting about how we create world peace, you know, studying what people have done in the past. So that's exciting. I like the women that I get to interact with there. Ah, very good through the internet. Nice. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hoping that usually on Saturdays I get to go to the ocean before the sun comes up. And my friend who usually takes me, she's in Mexico right now dancing with women women getting together to spend a week dancing with each other. <laughs> so that should be interesting. So come back and tell me about that. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enjoy making, put a smile on everybody's face and away you go. Let me see yeah. what uh, George is. Hi, George. Uh, had a tough week with a work trip. Oh yeah, I've been on those. <laughs> you know, traveling and working. Yeah doing uh, installations of uh, machines and or services. Very, uh, it's very interesting, especially when everybody's on your case trying to get their problem solved. <laughs> and, uh, and then you get it done, All right? But, um, yeah, those were the fun old days. Service work. Yeah, are you in a fasting state doing it or? Uh, I can't make it work on trips yet. Yeah, always end up messing up, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. These, these things happen. Um, I've, I've done many, many, many fasts in all my years of working. You know, as, as I mentioned, I worked, used to work with uh, metal uh, machine shop, welding, building machines, and auto body, did all kinds of stuff. And, and I've always fasted, but I don't remember ever doing it on a service call on a trip. Yeah, you know, uh, especially when you have people they want to take you out for food and so on and so forth and yeah, it's, it's, it gets challenging but um, you can make it work if you really want it to right you just uh, make up whatever excuse you have to make up you know I'm a strict diet my doctor put me on and I have to watch myself so I can Thank you so much, but I'll have to pass <laughs> or whatever. Um, usually when you mention anything about your doctor, uh, people usually uh, leave you alone because um, most of the masses, they believe in the, uh, in the white jackets, right? Over anything else, so, or, you know, sad but true. Um, We've seen it more than ever in these last three years. Um, but um, hey, each one of us has free will to choose as we please. Uh, but, you know, you can uh, pretty much, if you're going to be uh, eating, you can find fruit anywhere, any grocery store, um, you know, I've always traveled with my uh, ozone generator, so grab some 
fruit, go back to the hotel and clean it up and eat. Pretty simple to do. I went out with dinner one night with people, like you said, ended up with mucus, unable to sleep all night, hate it. Yeah, well, um, these are the choices we have to make. And uh, uh, this is the thing where if we're, you know, if people are choosing to do a long, uh, be, being on a long uh, level seven, um, you can really hurt yourself. And that's, that's a challenge. So, um, but if, you know, even if you're choosing like level four or five, you're up there, four, five, six, and um, what's going on here? Hello, what, did, why? Yeah. did I just freeze? No. No? Oh. I wonder why is it that when you're fasting and then you're eating meat, it can hurt you. And then you're eating? And then eating meat, why it can meat? hurt you if you've been fasting, yeah. Well, these are very obstructive, uh, you know, flesh is very obstructive. The protein, you got your highest obstructive things to consume are your fats, proteins, and, and grains, uh, you know, so when you're you know consuming these things after uh, especially a long fast um you have the gi tract which is in a very tender state like i guess we can put it because it's been shedding and 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 regenerating and then you go put these highly obstructive things in there um you're asking for trouble you know, I was just, I, I don't know if you were on the last call, but uh, I was just speaking with somebody who uh, knew somebody who did a 40-day water fast, went out and picked out, and he died, right? So I don't know how, how many times uh, people want to test their, their waters, believing they're different than everybody else. As, uh, you know, mankind, which includes women, uh, we are all designed by the same creator, and, and we have the, the rules of cause and effect are for all of us. Um, why, wh whether, you know, why some people can get away with that and, and live through it, you know, it, it doesn't mean that um, we should be doing it. You know, just like people killing each other for since the beginning of the time doesn't mean it's correct. It doesn't mean we should be doing it. There's um, uh, basic understandings that we've gained from decades of fasting and, and and guiding thousands of people fasting. And when you go through these and you go through um, the um, not so great uh, breaking fast times, uh, you learn a lot, you learn a lot. And uh, like I said, you know, there's people with stronger constitutions, they're not um, as highly obstructive as somebody else and they'll do a long fast and then they'll break it poorly and they live through it, they can tell. Uh, doesn't mean anything to me. Um, we're dealing with um, people that are coming in this realm, which are have been um, uh, in, are in a very highly obstructive state, and or have been uh, butchered to the to the rim through the uh, medical mafia system, and uh, and or whatever weak genetics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you know you're you're dealing with uh, every every sort of type of people. Um, you can't you can't paint uh, you know everybody with one brush. But uh, what we do know is uh, any why any man can fast, but it takes a wise man to break a fast. And that saying holds true, very very true. It, breaking the fast is where the challenge is for everybody, and that's where. Uh, we really need to put a lot of focus because, um, as we've seen, you know, people get into the fasting state. And, you know, we've seen sad eaters do, a, you know, 180 days, and it was no problem for them. For some of them, you know, some people had big challenges. Some people had no problem. Like I said, it depends where you're coming from. But um, it was breaking the fast where people, um, uh, as soon as they put that first uh, food parcel in their mouth. Um, that that but that will start to determine where they're going to end up going. You know, are they going to be 
sane or are they going to go insane? You know, you don't know. Nobody knows until they go through the experience. This is why we say the only way you're going to gain the understanding is going through the experiences over and over and over again. Um, we, we can hear, um, you know, thousands of people uh, talk about their experience and we think we gain the, the understanding, but it doesn't happen until you go through the experience yourself. So, you know, if you want to eat flesh, uh, that's, uh, you know, your choice to do that. Um, uh, but uh, we do not recommend anybody breaking a fast with, uh, with anything, but what's recommended in the protocol, you know, breaking the fast properly. So, you know, people will do what, what they're going to do. They're not going to listen to uh, what we say, as we've seen. They, they're going to do what they're going to do anyway. Um, they're not going to take uh, decades and decades of experiences uh, uh, as, as truth because people want to test their own waters. And, um, you know, people have free will to choose as they, as they want. Um, you know, everybody uh, must choose to take charge of their own health. And... Uh, if they want to risk their lives, um, that's their choice. And then, yeah. you know, um, thou shalt not kill me it includes thou shalt not kill ourselves, right? Not, committing suicide is not is not something that is in line with uh, peace, balance, and correct conduct. Uh, killing is killing. Uh, some people want to believe in, um, you know, committing suicide is okay in certain situations. Um, I don't see it that way. Uh, I see it that we have to do everything we can to allow ourselves to live as best we can until our last breath, until we're called to leave the physicality. And uh, and that is uh, not by our will. It's uh, by our divine creator's uh, plan for us. For us. Um, you know, when we get the tap on the shoulder, it's time to go, it's time to go. But um, yeah. So if you're, uh, you know, there's just lots of people, you know, doing fasts and, and eating flesh uh, out there. Um, you, you go do a, a, a master fast and you start eating flesh. Um, it's, it's not going to be wise. I, I don't recommend it. Um, like I said, um, people are doing all kinds of things. It doesn't mean it's correct. So there's your answer. Uh, break your fast wisely, prudently. Um, always even on short fast, because that's how you're going to get the training. So then as you, um, uh, you know, done this for several months, few years, um, then you're going to be able to go into the longer fast and have an idea, an inkling uh, of, you know, well, yeah, we, when you're breaking, we're your fast. Fast. Um, I'm getting feedback here. When you break your fast, you're going to have a better idea of how you're going to be able to handle that. Um, and not just go cuckoo uh, because of you, you've had a lot of training of, 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 of fasting and breaking your fast over and over and over on a week to week basis or on a bi weekly basis or on an absolute minimum on a month to month basis. Um, if you're doing it less than on a month to month basis, you're not living a lifestyle. You're just living an eating lifestyle. You know, if you're just doing it, uh, you know, every several months or, you know, once a year or every several years, that's not a fasting lifestyle. Fasting lifestyles, you're consistent. Uh, you're having your dry fasting windows daily, uh, weekly, monthly, season change. Uh, you have your wet windows happening regularly on how you choose, et cetera, et cetera. So a fasting lifestyle is you're regularly fasting, right? And, and it's not a uh, uh, it's not a lifestyle um, many people choose. Um, you know, for what I've seen in the past uh, thirty three years. Most people are not going to choose a fasting lifestyle. That's just the way it is. And uh, the last three years have shown us even more how much uh, people are are not willing to live a fasting lifestyle. Because what is fasting lifestyle? It's nothing to do with the physicality. Fasting lifestyle is spiritual first and foremost. And um, we can see how humanity has gone down the tubes with a spiritual life. Um, uh, I don't know. We don't like people don't like to hear, but. Um, Lucifer's in charge of this realm, and whether you want to believe it or not, you can't see what's happening. Um, the Luciferic agenda is at full, full force, full play, and the only way out of it is for people to uh, choose God, um, choose God's uh, ways, and uh, make the changes. 
uh, choose peace, balance, correct conduct in every instance of our lives as best we possibly can. We're going to make mistakes for sure because we're being tested all the time. And um, we have um, influences of society all around us everywhere, you know, family, friends, coworkers, just, you know, going out and, and uh, shopping or whatever, uh, doing your, you know, living your life. We're getting uh, bombarded with uh, um, um, peer pressures and all kinds of things. Um, so this is why we have a group so we can, you know, support each other in a fasting lifestyle. If that's what you choose, if that's not what you choose, there's no reason for you to be here. <laughs> you just want to learn uh, what a fasting lifestyle is about. Yeah, we're, we're here. We, we uh, you know, share that, but um, um, that's what we focus on fasting lifestyle. So, um, um, what is a fasting lifestyle? Exactly what we've been discussing the last eight years. Yeah. Living, loving it, choosing um, a fast in life, a, a lifestyle that is around the spiritual fasting lifestyle. Uh, the eating is second hand. It's it's not something that we believe that is necessary. We do it for fun. We eat for fun. We love eating, but we love fasting way more. So we choose um, a spiritual fasting lifestyle over the um, eating lifestyle. And sometimes we're going to fall off the wagon and we're going to eat, uh, you know, for six, seven days a week, uh, maybe, you know, two, three weeks in a row, fall off. And sometimes we'll go longer than that. And we're going to, you know, say, okay, we've had enough of this. And we're going to have to pick ourselves up and and uh, get back on track. Because um, uh, when, you, when you've when you been fasting for so long, like we have uh, for decades, um, uh, eating is very, very painful doesn't matter how clean you eat. It's very, very painful. It's very, very taxing. Let's put, let's put that down. Taxing. And depending on how obstructive you, you eat, uh, it, will, it can be much more painful. So it's very taxing on the system. Um, you know, uh, when you have the feeling on living off the fields versus living on matter, it's just a night and day. You can't compare the two. It's two different scenarios. Living off fields versus living on off of matter and um, we can do both right and we can do both well uh, but um, when you've done so much fasting uh, your senses are going to be awakened and you're going to feel everything that you eat everything and some people see it as negative I see it as all 100% positive because our senses are there we have senses so that we can feel things otherwise we wouldn't need them so their senses are there to warn us and, and, and teach us. And uh, we embrace all our senses and all our sensations and feelings and so on and so forth, because that's what they're there for. So um, allow the process to unfold and, and be wise and prudent in everything we choose to eat. You know, um, you know living this lifestyle, um, if, if people want to choose to eat the flesh occasionally, um, you know, that's not going to be a big problem if it's done, you know, very occasionally. Um, and occasionally will not be something like on a weekly basis. That's that's a re that's a regular basis. Um, occasionally would be, you know, like every two or three months or something like that. You know, if you want to taste some flesh, uh, or you get invited to a place and they have uh, some flesh, a fish which is also flesh, whatever, and you know, you just want to uh, you know go along with uh, the evening. You want to. Um, taste some of that that's that's your choice and your prerogative but you're going to feel it you're going to feel it and um, um, you know there's some things that you're going to feel um, quicker than others um, because of their stimulating uh, effect on the physicality um, this is why you see uh, flesh eating is gaining more popularity now than ever uh, is because of the uh, the stimulating effects that people are looking for, that instant feeling, uh, instant gratification. So uh, at a cost, remember, cause, cause and effect, you can't, you can't escape that. So there's always a cost to stimulants, fats, proteins, um, grains. Uh, these are all stimulants, drugs. And there's a cost to 
consuming these things. Um, we want to justify um, us eating them because of the way it makes us feel instantly. And, and the justification will be the reason for us to continue to do these things. Um, so, um, but yeah, uh, we see what's, what's happening out there. Um, never seen anything like it, especially in the last three years. It's gone, um, pretty, it's been pretty interesting what's happening anyway. <laughs> uh, we want to stay on track and, uh, you know, move in the direction of peace, balance, correct conduct as much as we possibly can. Um, as I know it's the right thing to do for me. Um, so yeah, George is getting back to uh, that. Um, it is what it is, right? We have to deal with every situation that we come across. Um, you know, and, uh, I want to ask you, have you ever used flower essences? And what do you think about them? Bach flower remedies? Uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, have, I, have, I think I have some, still some rescue remedy. Um, they, uh, they can work pretty good on people to, to assist. Um, I haven't seen anything um, without a fasting lifestyle do miraculous things. Uh, there's odd, the there's the odd exception of people um, that uh, have some miraculous healing happen, and it ain't because of just of what they're uh, taking in, uh, you know, as a addition. Um, there's uh, cases where people just pray themselves to to complete miraculous healing. I shared that um, uh, testimony from that woman who uh, wrote the book. Uh, near death experience. I don't remember the name. It's a, a post I made uh, recently. And um, you can have a look at that. So, you know, we want to implement all the little, all the things we have, all the, little, all the knowledge, all the tools available we want to use. But fasting is the foundation of uh, miraculous healing. Uh, from what I've uh, uh, been able to experience and, and witness over and over and over again with so many different people. Um, works every time if we work it. Works every time if we work it. Um, you know, when you see nerves regenerating, bones straightening out that were crooked from birth and, and uh, all kinds of, so, so many different things, you know, like, it's, I was going through some of the old uh, videos a few weeks back and just, I'm just wow, I'm just oh, this one and that one and this one. It's just uh, beautiful to uh, have been a witness to all that stuff. But yeah, George, uh, use all the tools, essential oils. I love essential oils because they, they work on the emotion. So do the, do the flower essences because we're, we're, we're using the spirits of the plants. And the spirits of the plants are are very highly elevated, and they're here to help us. And um, they work so much better when we're in a fasting state, because uh, they can only do so much work. They can only help us us do so much work when we're in an eating state. You know, and we've seen um, miraculous things happen. You know, with with herbs and people eating right, clean up their diet and just doing herbs. We've seen miraculous things happen, but not at the level of uh, fasting, uh, what we're doing in the mass fast realm. Uh, I was thinking of it as an added tool to the lifestyle, not expecting miracles. Yeah, use them and, uh, you know, um, and, 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 and see how they work on you. Uh, the rescue remedy is a great one for anybody who's gotten into, a, you know, uh, an accident or something and you need to calm them down, give them some rescue remedy and, and watch how things shift. Uh, and if they're bleeding, you know, you know, hopefully have some cayenne tincture with you and, and or some cayenne powder, you know, right under blood, you can, on the cut, you can put uh, cayenne powder, stops the bleeding instantly. Um, and you can give uh, uh, cayenne tincture internally as well. And, and, you know, if somebody's had a heart attack and, and uh, cayenne 
can help uh, uh, aid in the heart attack and, and uh, stop the damage. Uh, we've, you can uh, Google, uh, Google. You can do an internet search uh, not using Google <laughs> without many other forms of searches uh, to uh, watch videos of people who've uh, shared their stories of saving people with, from heart attacks with cayenne pepper. And then uh, uh, also, also hydrogen peroxide you can put on a cut and uh, it will stop the bleeding as well. But that's uh, not something uh, you want to carry around, I don't think. <laughs> um, uh, but that's one thing. There's uh, somebody mentioned in the group that in India they use turmeric powder, if I, if I remember the post correctly, the, as she mentioned. Um, they used turmeric to stop bleeding. So there's so many tools and arsenals in nature. They're, they all come from nature, and then they corrupt them and take them for themselves, uh, the medical morphine powder. Will. But there's an infinite amount of tools. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the information has been lost and suppressed, and, uh, you know, the Internet's being scrubbed of all this wonderful information. When you do searches now, it's not like before. It's very difficult to find proper uh, natural remedies uh, that have been out there um, and uh, they, they've scrubbed the internet very well. Uh, it's not uh, like it used to be. So be wary about where you get your information. Uh, if you have any master herbalists uh, in your area, um, you know, you can talk to them about things that you can use and so on and so forth and what's good to have. Um, it would be great uh, if there's any courses in your area you want to do and uh, learn about uh, wild herbs. Uh, you can do wild herb walks, and there's people offering that. Um, so you can learn a lot uh, from uh, all this. You know, we have a big arsenal in our uh, formula section, uh, tinctures. Uh, we have uh, the protocol, uh, which has a lot of information. And we have the tools section of the protocol, which has a lot of information of things you can do. Um, there's so much information. Um, so just, uh, you know, be focused because uh, the, the, the toughest thing when you're going through a challenge like a healing reaction, uh, you know, or, or whatever, in an accident, uh, is remembering what you need to do. So, um, you know, it's good to have a place uh, where you can go to and uh, gain your information. So uh, have the information available at hand you know, as, um, as best you possibly can. But um, an emergency situation, uh, an accident, for it, you need to act quickly. And a cayenne tincture, I keep one in the car. Keep a, you know, a, little, a small bottle like that in the car with a cayenne tincture. Uh, not a clear bottle, one. Yeah. you know, get a colored one, you know, like a dark bottle. You don't want to keep tinctures in light bottles. That one there's not a tincture. Uh, I don't have it here. It's always good to keep. Uh, right, you know, here, here is a is an old uh, essential oil bottle. I put the cayenne tincture in here, so you can uh, administer with drops. That would work. It's, it's for just emergency cases, right? Um, yeah. Uh, funny you mentioned that partner is going to register for a tincture making course with local herbalists next month. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Um, knowledge, you know, do, if you are still going to be trusting in the medical mafia today with everything that's happened in the last three years, I don't know what to say. Um, I've always said it was, has evil tentacles right from its start. Its whole roots, its whole system is not is not one of uh, divine source. Um, do they have to help people here and there? Absolutely. If they killed everybody, they wouldn't be able to operate. So they have to make it um, that it's uh, that make belief that they're helping people. Uh, let's put it that way. 
and um, keep customers for as long as they possibly can and make lifetime customers. And that's what their whole purpose is. Um, I, it's my whole belief system. Everybody can choose whatever they want to believe. If they believe in that system, that's fine. Uh, I don't believe in it. Um, it has its purpose for emergency situations where you get in accidents and so on and so forth. That's the only purpose I see for that system. Um, anything to do with health, you got to keep take charge of your own health. And um, preventative is always better than trying to resolve a challenge situation. Preventing is always better. So we have most people coming here, the other, you know, the opposite of prevention. Uh, after they've gone down the ringer and been butchered, uh, they come to us and want to be saved. And uh, we can't do anything but share information for them to empower themselves and save themselves. That's the only way it can be done. We, can, we have to all save ourselves. And when we support each other in, uh, in the same line of thinking, it's much, much uh, easier uh, for us to uh, live this lifestyle. Uh, when we're doing it all on our own, it's a whole different ballgame. <clears throat> Excuse me. A whole different ballgame. You know, uh, like, you know, prior to when I started back in 1990, no internet, no nothing. Um, had to try and find books and order them in and wait weeks or months to get them. And and uh, that was the way we did it back then. So we didn't know any other way. And um, there was a whole different mindset. Now people, because of the internet and information is just a, a tap away on your keyboard, on your phone, um, everybody wants things instantly. And that whole instant men, men, uh, gratification mentality is what we're at now. And it's very, very, very difficult to break through and, and, and pierce the Luciferic intellect illusion because that's what it is. It's a Luciferic intellect illusion of instant gratification. It's very difficult to pierce the truth uh, and so people can gain the, the understanding and take charge of their own health and, and know that it's going to take the time it takes. How long is it? As long as it takes. Uh, weeks, months, years. We don't know. Uh, depending, you know, where you're coming from, where you're at. And there's infinite possibilities in that. So embrace everything that comes. MFS, master fasting, everything's going to come to the surface. Everything is going to come to the surface. And some of these things that come to the surface are not going to be pleasant. So we need to look in the mirror and embrace whatever it is and learn how to handle whatever comes to the surface, whatever it may be. There's some nasty stuff we've seen. And, um, you know, allow it to, you know, take place. So, yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm a high, I advocate of fasting if you haven't noticed <laughs> it's uh, something I've embraced in 1990 after reading Arnold Herrick's book that's it I embraced it I knew it was a fasting I was going to go embark in a fasting lifestyle and nothing swayed me away from that I, I swayed away from um, the basics of, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, of how to live when we're eating and so on and so forth. I've swayed from the basics, uh, listening to uh, the Luciferic intellect, which entrapped me. It's just like it entraps most people. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of damage. So um, keep things simple. Um, we keep our creator, the universe, and nature as our teachers. Um, science, if you believe in science, um, then that is your God, I guess. Um, that's your choice. Uh, I look at science as a, a tool of what not to do. That's the way I, I look at it these days mainstream science, I look at it as a tool of what to stay away from. Uh, I look at it as a tool of the, that raises flags in, in everything they do. I look at it as a tool 
only and exclusively as a tool. And we can use these tools. Like I said, if you get in an accident, you got to go uh, break leg or break an arm. You go in, you go into these places, you ask a lot of questions. And don't stop asking questions. It's your life. You have the right. I shared a story. I was going with my father back and forth into the hospitals. And uh, one day I was, uh, this pharmacist comes in with her whole list of drugs they want to give him. And I started asking questions. And she's answering all the questions. And then she, she goes, I wish everybody would ask questions like you. I go, what do you mean? Don't people ask oh, people ask questions? Ask your questions? She goes, nobody. I go, come on. She goes, nobody questions us. And I was in shock. So when you see that humanity is at that, mankind is at that level to go into these places with full trust, that's why I say that is their God. They don't question. If you're going to question God, then you don't believe um, he has everything planned perfectly. So that's the way they. I see <laughs> mankind has gone down that road. Is The medical mafia is their God. And we've seen it clearly in the last three years of what's happened. Um, that's my opinion and my belief of my uh, life experiences in this realm. Um, so, you know, um, I've got myself in pretty, pretty scary situations where uh, um, I said, do or die, <laughs> and avoided those places. So, um, like I said, everybody has to make those choices. I'm not here to make any choices for anybody. Um, choose your belief system wisely. Um, we highly recommend you create a very good relationship with your divine, with our divine creator. Because there's only one creator uh, from my belief system. And um, that would be the wise choice. Uh, this is following mammon as a god. Science, the white jacket as your god. <laughs> So yeah, choose a fasting lifestyle. Choosing a fasting lifestyle would be uh, one of the wisest things uh, you can do. Um, once you've done it uh, and lived it for a few years, you start saying, wow, wow, wow. And, and uh, that'll keep you going. And you know, life happens and you may fall off the wagon you may fall off, you know, even after two, three, four years or more, you know, because life happens. And um, we have to stay clear and remember, remember our, our experiences of, uh, of everything that happens, uh, you know, during a fasting lifestyle, because it's so profound. Uh, the changes that happen is just like, it's, it's miraculous. I don't know what else we can call it. Um, it's just miraculous, you know. Anyway, where are we at? 944? Um, if anybody else has any questions, um, I've done enough blabbering. <laughs> I've shared my uh, thoughts for past eight years now in this uh, in this group and my beliefs, and uh, not much has changed, right? It's just uh, uh, actually uh, my beliefs are, are, are more and more reinforced of a faster lifestyle. Um, uh, it's uh, the more time goes on, the more I see how beautiful and powerful this way of living is. Um, you know, 
we can, you know, after living a fasting lifestyle for many years, we can choose to stop living that lifestyle and go back to a full-time eating lifestyle. And uh, we won't be happy campers, but we could do that. We could choose that. We all have free will to do that. And um, wrong or right, everything you're going to have to decide uh, for yourselves. But um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen I've seen people do that, and uh, then they're on their literally on their deathbed after going back to an eating lifestyle, and uh, and uh, for some reason they continue that route till they leave their physical body uh, because they just don't want to go back to a fasting lifestyle and that happens and um, I guess that's uh, the journey you know for those people that that's the journey that they chose and that's what they needed to learn for whatever reason um, but to remember um, it's never too late everything is possible and um you just have to make the choice to live it and love it. Um, be wise. Um, going back to the flesh eating, um, when you've um, assisted uh, thousands of people uh, with washing their colon and colonics, and you meet all kinds of different people, uh, all kinds of different diet lifestyles. And you see how the bowels respond and or what comes out of the bowels. Uh, you have a pretty, pretty good indication if those diets are um, destructive or helping. So what I can tell you is knowing two long-time colon hydrotherapists, I have a friend who's been doing it for probably close to 35 or more years now, and Rana, I can tell you that flesh has no place in making bowels um, work better. Fats have no place in making bowels work better. Proteins in general have no place in bowels working better. It just doesn't happen. No matter what comes out of people's mouths because of the justification of the stimulating effects, the neurotransmitters, um, it, we don't see it. We don't see it happening. Um, you know, uh, let's say somebody comes from a complicated, sad diet, and then they go into a, a simple flesh-eating diet, right? They just eat one thing, and they start getting better. They feel better. Well, it, it's not because of the flesh-eating. It's because they simplified their diet. Remember that. The simple mono-eating is always going to be easier on our system than eating many different things, Right? So that's why mono eating is uh, the preferred way to eat if you can uh, maintain mono diet. That would be uh, ultimate. No matter what you eat, you know, just eat one thing at a time. As soon as we start adding things and mixing things, that's when our system can and will have challenges, right? Mixing so many different things. So the more simple we eat, the better off our health will be. And uh, that, my friends, is one key that um, people fail to see. So healing does not come from eating, right? Eating and healing do not belong in the same sentence, as we said over and over and over again. Healing comes from spirit, it comes from the divine through our soul to uh, make things happen. and. Uh, it's what we don't eat that uh, will bring us closer to the healing path. With that said, thank you so much for joining. Let's uh, elevate all souls on the planet to peace, balance, correct conduct.
and uh, Mother Earth needs it more than ever. Uh, and we'll see you on the page. We'll see you back on uh, Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon, Facebook Live. And uh, have yourselves a good day, evening, morning, wherever you are. Um, keep living it. Keep loving it. Being in a fasting state is wonderful. You know, I'm in a wonderful dry fasting state again. And um, embrace, embrace all that comes. It's just a beautiful, peaceful, wonderful place to be. It's just that society is not yet ready in the most part for supporting us in this lifestyle. So we have to do it uh, in a private setting with like-minded people. Ciao for now.